in this tutorial, we will be uh, looking at the virtual production tools in Unreal using the OG Oculus Rift. So um, all the tutorials about it seem to be about Vive because everyone's fanboys of the Vive. So uh, I have done the hard work for you and figured out how to get it working with the Rift so that you could just copy me instead. Um, so first of all, we have to just set up your Rift. Oh, I've already got mine set up. So um, it, this will work with any any uh, VR headset and motion controllers that work with Steam VR. Uh, that being said, ones that use inside out tracking, so the Rift S, the Vive Cosmos, and anything labeled with uh, Windows Mixed Reality um, probably won't work the best. Um, and sort of there's a different way of doing that, which uh, I may look at later. Um, so, uh, as for the Guardian system on the Rift, uh, technically it shouldn't interfere, but, um, I, I think it's a safer bet if you just leave it, uh, sort of on, off. Um, and so obviously we'll be using the Unreal Engine, uh, it just got updated to 4.25, so, uh, yes, that's what we're using. Alrighty, so what we're going to start with is the, um, so I recommend just doing this in a blank um, project first uh, before you try and put it inside your own project just because it can be a bit complicated and so it's easier to get your head around in a sort of blank from scratch so we're going to choose games um, and we're going to use the blank one um, leave this all at default and give it a name um, VP tutorial uh, create project alrighty so here we are inside uh, our blank project. Um, so I have not figured out how to get this to working with the Oculus API that comes with Unreal, um, but I do know how to get it working with the Steam VR API. So well, to get around that, so by default the Oculus will use its own API. So we just have to go into the plugins uh, in the Unreal Engine and turn off Oculus VR and make sure Steam VR is turned on and restart the editor. Um, yep, so you will need Steam VR on uh, and installed. So that's just popped up here now. Um, now, for some reason, when I did this the first time, it didn't actually disable the Oculus one, although it seems to work here. Um, so you should see the Steam VR logo pop up in this toolbar, which I cannot see. So um, the next thing we want to do is enable VR controls inside the editor so we don't have to play in VR to use it. Um, this one's quite simple. We just need to go to the little drop down besides the play um, and under advanced settings. Uh, at the top here, viewport gets HMD control. Just tick it and that's done. Alrighty, so next what we're going to do is create a new blueprint for our, uh, our sort of camera. So uh, let's hit blueprint class. We want an actor blueprint um, and give it a name. Uh, I'm going to type it the other way, track to camera. Alrighty. Now, first thing in this blueprint we want to do is that you want to add a component and call it, just type cube and get a cube component in like that. And we can compile and save it. Um, and that's just going to represent so we can physically see it without looking through the camera. So on our event graph, we what we want to do is we want to get the get tracked um, device position and orientation. See, it's part of the Steam VR here. Uh, and we simply want to plug that into a set relative transform for the cube. Like so. Um, now, this is where most tutorials I have found uh, end, and like that. So this is where the most of the um, resources I found online end, but um, I feel just showing a screenshot of this is not actually very helpful. Um, so what we want to do, so first you'll notice the device ID here. Um, so that represents each uh, device gets its own unique ID in Steam VR. Um, so it gets it gets um, allocated in the um, sort of 
order we have put them plugged them in um, so usually the headset will get zero and then the trackers so the vive does not give tracking numbers to the its base stations because the oculus ones are plugged into the computer they do get a number um, luckily we want to track a controller and usually uh, tr controllers are the last thing to get connected so it's pretty easy to guess what their uh, ID is so I grab a controller and hit turn it on there we go so uh, if we count it down so the headset I plugged in first so that's going to be zero uh, the two sensors are going to be one or two and then so this controller is going to be device number three like so. So now we compile it and save it. And we simply drag it into our world. Like so. And if everything has gone right, then it should move around. But it's not because, like I thought, Steam. Oh, there we go. Hey! So with oculus um you sort of the sensors need to be able to see the headset to get its relative position to allow it to move around um but other than that yeah as i point it around and move it around we get the cube spins around so before we move on what we're going to look at is what is there is another way of getting the device id which is uh um id something um it's under VR, Steam VR, get tracked device IDs. Um, now I've seen some things like when my, in my research to find out how the device IDs work, a lot of people are saying, oh, just use this, but they weren't specifying how you use that, um, which really annoyed me. So the, the way you use this is first you want to click what you want to get the IDs for. Um, so obviously we want our controller. Um, then you need a for each loop here and we're going to plug the array of devices that comes out of this into the loop array um, and we want the event tick into the execute um, and then we simply want a print one print string uh, let's pull that there uh, we're going to go out of the loop body and grab the array element into the string and it will convert it into a string now when we play the game if you give it a second, you should get a long one. Here we go. Ta-da! You just get down the side of the screen a bajillion numbers, um, usually two if you have both controllers on. In my case, I've only got one controller on. And that's simply telling you the ID of your controller. So now we can go to the blueprint and remove that because we no longer need that. So that's how you use that node if um especially for the vive if you're using the tracker pucks then um especially if you have more than one you know it's a bit easier to find them that way so next what we want to do is add a camera right because that's what all this is about so what we're going to do is add a component um and we're going to use the cinema camera and we are simply going to make that a child of the cube now the reason we do this is because we can add an offset to the camera and the relative transform node here will not affect that offset um, obviously you don't have to use a cube here but cubes work nicely for this so i'm just going to set that back wherever it came from one across Boop. Uh, compile and save it so now we have a cube with a camera in here so so what we want to do is um, so obviously that still doesn't help us because if I hit play and move out a bit and grab the controller which I threw across the room because I'm stupid wakey wakey oh no has it stopped working so um, if you're an idiot like me you got to make sure that uh, the event tick is still plugged into the relative transform. Uh, compile and save it. And now it should work again. There, now it's working. <laughs> so, um, by default, for some reason, the Oculus exclusively is inverted. So you've just got to, like, spin the cube around. 
Okay, and now it should... Yeah, the way... But this still doesn't work because obviously we can't see what the camera is seeing. So now we'll look at... So what we want to do is we want to uh, essentially change the uh, viewport to what the camera is seeing. A again, this is something that I haven't found in any other tutorial yet. Um, and so the way we're going to do that is first we're going to set up some action keys in Unreal. So we're going to go to settings, and we're going to go to project settings. Uh, and under engine, we are going to go to input, and we are going to add a new action map. This action map we're going to call camera um, change, change camera, change camera. Alrighty, and we want to add a new input on this, um, and I'm going to set it to the Rift Touch controller, um, the right one we're using. I'm going to set it to the A button. Right, A button. Oh, wait, no, not touch. Right, A press. Alrighty. Um, and then just for ease of use, I'm also going to add the number one on the keyboard, like that. And so you can. Um, you can change these to whatever you want. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can add as many as you want. So what we're going to do next is we're going to edit the level blueprint. So you're going to have to le edit the level blueprint on every level you want to use the camera tracker in. Um, and so first what we're going to do is we're going to call our um, the event, no, the action map we made, um, which we called change camera. Camera like so and then next we want a set view target with blend um, and so you you can't really find this unless it's gonna yeah so you have to turn off context sensitive to find this um, also you have to spell it right target with blend alrighty so what we're gonna do is when we press this action we want to run this node um, and so under target, we are going to use a get player controller ID. Controller ID. So this just simply returns whatever um, view we currently are in. Um, oh, oops. We don't want the ID one. We just want to get player controller. That's better. Alrighty, so yeah, this just returns whatever we are ooh, whoa, um, we are currently looking at, um, and we want to change it. So what we're going to do, minimize this blueprint and select our camera tracker, and then go back into our blueprint and turn right click and turn on context sensitive, and then just click create a reference to the tracked camera, and drag that in there. And that's it, so compile and save. And now when we play it, uh, hit play, I'll move it around, make sure it's tracking, there we go, I've got the, there we go, headset so it'll move around. Now if we hit one on the keyboard or A on the controller, we are now possessing the camera. Just like that. And that is the bread and butter, the basics of this setup. Um, so this is where you can think about, um, obviously, uh, my shaky hands. Um, so thinking about um, rigs and stuff. So Oculus provides a 3D printed mount to mount the controller on cameras and stuff. Um, so I'll link to that in the description. Um, but uh, sort of bigger rigs. Um, and then also you can add more functionality, which is what I'm currently working on, like screenshots and moving it around with the uh, joystick on the controller and stuff like that, um, which I will make for another video. But this is the basics of it. Um, so if I hit escape. Alrighty, to change the settings of our camera, we simply got one who click on our track camera blueprint and go down into its components and click on the cinema camera. And then you're going to get all these standard cinema camera things. So like if I change the focal length, way out, um, and then, yep, switch back to the camera. Oh, now it's upside down apparently. Whoa, that's trippy. Um, maybe if the headset pops in, there we go. And now we have a really wide camera.